now welcoming Jay Wright, the head coach from Villanova here for March Madness, March Madness 365. And Jay, um, we've talked in the offseason. This has been unlike any other season, any other year any of us have ever experienced. Um, what's it been like to prepare a potential top five team, a t- potential title team amid these circumstances? It's been, it's been really challenging. It really has. It's, it's been, uh, it's, it's been fun, but, um, you know, we, we've been hit with, you know, a, a COVID outbreak. We, we had the, uh, the 14 day quarantine, which actually turned into 23 days before we got, um, enough guys really to practice and, and, and longer than that until we got to eight scholarship players because of injuries. After we came back from that, we had injuries. And I'm sure everybody in the country is dealing with it. Um, it's, it's not just the 14 days. And you know, when you shut down a whole, an entire team, you know, they're not doing anything really. They're trying on their own. And then when you come back, you've got a lot of things to put in. So I'm, I'm sure every coach is dealing with that. We're all coaching differently than we ever have before in the preseason. But you appreciate every second you have on the court more than you ever did. So one theme that I think is really going to be imperative throughout the course of the season is the teams that have the experience like you guys have, like Baylor, like Gonzaga, the top three, at least in the preseason, maybe have the best chance to survive all of this. Because if those circumstances happen, like you said, while, yes, physically, it could take time to get back up to speed um, in terms of teaching what you want to run. Uh, familiarity, those things you don't have to worry about as much. Um, so in one way, how much comfort does that bring you that you at least know that you've got that known commodity? It, it, it has made a big difference. I've really thought um, that if, if we would have been going through what we've been through last year with all the new faces, we would have been really in trouble. Uh, we are able to adapt. We're able to put things in quicker. Um, I feel like we're behind in terms of where we normally would be this year, but, um, but we can get things in quicker. We, we respond quicker. We pick things up, uh, better. And when we start playing games, everybody that we have has been in games. Um, you know, last year, Jeremiah Robinson Earl at this point would not have played in a college game. Justin Moore would not have played in a college game. Uh, Eric Dixon, you know, so I, I do feel our experience our familiar, familiarity with the program is, is an advantage to us, especially in this kind of season. All right, so all things being equal, uh, when we get to actual games in a couple of weeks, and I hope to see you at the Mohegan Sun, and when we get to the Big East, um, when that actually happens, when the team is actually on the floor, uh, in what way do you think this team has the ingredients to potentially be the kind of championship team that you've had in the past? experience you know like we talked about it is is important it's similar to our other teams um uh, leadership uh, is is similar to our other teams with colin gillespie uh jermaine samuels a senior demir cosby roundtree a senior depth uh, I, th- I think um we we've got depth that we really haven't had in the last couple of years since um we were reeling a little bit the last couple of years from losing four got the four guys leaving early after 18 season. Um, it, was a, it was a good thing for the programs, good thing for those guys. But it, in, in our roster structuring the last couple of years, it really affected our depth. And I think we've finally caught up to where, where we've got some good depth, some older guys, younger guys, some, um, some uh, really good chemistry um, that, that you need if you're going to make a long run. And in terms of schedule, Jay, um, it's still being finalized. Uh, it's crazy that, you know, we don't have a full list of games here in mid-November for a couple of weeks from now. Uh, this has been, I think, one of the most challenging things that coaches and staffs have had to do since I've been covering this for 30 years. Uh, you know, what, what's your comfort level of, of how the schedule will play out, especially when we get into traditional Big East games in January and February? Well, you know, we will have easily the most difficult schedule we, we've ever had. You know, um, it, we're, we're looking like we're getting pretty finalized here. Um, you know, we're going to open up with Boston College and the winner of Arizona State and Baylor. And then we get into our big five competition where, you know, we'll play LaSalle and, and Temple. Then we go at Texas and then we'll have Virginia and then we'll have four Big East games in, in December. So, I mean, it. We, we, it'll be 
it'll be by far the most challenging schedule we've ever had. Um, you know, as you alluded to, we don't even have our schedule after Christmas yet. So the Big East is trying to get as, as many games as we can in, in January, in, in December, league games, which, which is really crowding the schedule. And we're trying to leave space at the end in case some teams do get hit um, with a quarantine and they're out, we have space to reschedule. But I think the month of December this year in college basketball is going to be extraordinary. We've never seen it like this before because everybody's trying to get in as many games as they can before Christmas because we're all going to be hit with that challenge of coming back from Christmas. Do we quarantine? Do we keep the kids on campus? What do we do? We're, we're still working that that part of the schedule out right now. And the last thing, Jay, in terms of coaching, physically coaching, uh, you, like many of your peers, are animated. Um, you know, more than likely, you're going to have to wear a mask. Uh, officials would have to wear a mask when they talk to you or a player. Uh, there's going to be no crowds, at least for the foreseeable future. What's that in-game experience going to be like for you and your interaction with players and the officials? My, my wife likes to call these COVID blessings, the, the good things that come out of a bad situation here. Me having... Uh, a mask on is probably going to be, overall, is going to be a good thing for me. Um, I, 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 I'm trying to stay under control a lot more than I ever have, but uh, it's funny in practice, sometimes things happen and, you know, you make a, you make a bad face or you mumble under your voice and they, they don't see it. The guys don't see it. And, uh, you know, every once in a while, they'll do something that's kind of crazy and, and you'll laugh a little bit. They don't, they don't see that either. So it's, it, it, but it's challenging, like when you're trying to yell across the court at someone. So, you know, all in all, if you, if you have to measure it out, I think it's probably going to be a positive for us and the officials and the fans won't have to listen to uh, us yelling at anybody. Well, Jay, appreciate it. Uh, stay safe, and I hope to see you soon here in a couple of weeks. Yeah, I hope to see you uh, in Connecticut, Andy.